to one of the most important issues in trying to interpret associations and to derive inferences of causation, and this is the issue of confounding. It is discussed in the reference manual in detail, beginning on page 369. This diagram shows us a causal association. We observe an association between a certain characteristic or an exposure and a disease, and the characteristic or the exposure causes that disease. This is a causal relationship, and causation here is indicated by the arrow connecting the two boxes. It is also possible, however, that we can observe an association, as shown here, not because the characteristic or exposure causes the disease, but because both of them are linked to a third factor. Both are linked to a third factor, and that results in an observed association that is not causal. For example, this slide shows two possible interpretations of the well-known association of increased cholesterol and increased risk of coronary heart disease. On the left is a causal relationship, on the right is a confounded relationship. Here we see that increased cholesterol causes an increased risk of coronary heart disease. Here we see that increased cholesterol is observed to be associated with an increased risk of coronary heart disease, not because they're causally related, but because a third factor, called factor X, is linked to increased cholesterol and is a cause of coronary heart disease. What could that be? It could, for example, be the genetic profile of the individual. There could be a group of individuals who have a genetic profile that puts them at increased risk of coronary heart disease, and that same genetic profile is associated with an increased cholesterol. Well, you might ask, why do I care? What's the importance of this? The importance is that if the true model is what we see on the left, then if I can intervene and get people to lower their cholesterol, I can anticipate that I'm going to be able to lower their risk of coronary heart disease. But if the model is a confounded one that we see on the right, no matter what I do to reduce the cholesterol, I'm unlikely to have any impact on the risk of coronary heart disease, which is being caused by that genetic profile. So understanding whether a relationship is causal or confounded is extremely important. Here is another example. Many years ago, Dr. Brian McMahon, professor and chairman of the Department of Epidemiology at Harvard, reported an association between increased coffee consumption and cancer of the pancreas. The question arose, was the association that he reported a causal one, or was it the result of confounding? On the left again, a causal relationship. Increased coffee consumption causes an increased risk of cancer of the pancreas, and therefore we have an observed association of the two. On the right, we have the same observed association because both are associated with factor X. What could factor X be? One suggestion was that factor X could be cigarette smoking. Cigarette smoking is known to be a cause of increased risk of cancer of the pancreas. It is also known that you almost never find a cigarette smoker who doesn't drink coffee. There's a close link between cigarette smoking and coffee consumption. So that if we observe an increased risk of cancer of the pancreas in people who drink more coffee, it could be not because there's a causal relationship, but because both of them are associated with cigarette smoking. Clearly, the interpretation has major clinical and public health implications, depending which one appears to be correct. Finally, I want to show you a more recent example of a study that appeared within the past few months that raised the question of whether high blood levels of Agent Orange are associated with a high prevalence of diabetes in adults. The authors reported an observed association of increased blood levels of Agent Orange and prevalence of diabetes. Well, what does that association mean? It is possible, if the association is true, that we are really seeing the result of a causal relationship. 
that high blood levels of Agent Orange cause a high prevalence of diabetes. That is certainly one explanation. But the possibility was raised that this association that we observed might be due to confounding. How could that happen? We know that obesity is a risk factor for diabetes. We also know that the dioxins, which Agent Orange is a mixture, dioxins are stored in the fat tissue, in the adipose tissue. And therefore, we would expect higher blood levels of dioxin in people who have more cells storing the dioxins. Therefore, it is possible that we observe the association between high blood levels of Agent Orange and high prevalence of diabetes because both are associated with obesity. Obesity, we know, is a risk factor for diabetes, and obesity is linked to high levels of Agent Orange in the blood. This has not yet been clarified, what the nature of this relationship is. But it is evidence that the problem of confounding is a terribly important one that we have to take into account.